morning. It's good to see everybody, uh, even though it's via YouTube and not in live. I want to thank my number one YouTube follower, Josh Anderson, for his comments on the last effort that we made to make a video. We're going to continue to experiment with this until we get it right. We hope that you're encouraged by the efforts. The bishop firsthand has asked that there be no in-person worship services or meetings until at least April the 15th, which is a Wednesday night. We will take it a day at the time and follow guidance and use caution. We certainly don't want to put anybody uh, in any danger. As I look out today, it looks like a good place to social distance would be at church. Uh, we do have about an average crowd today as I, I look out. <laughs> Teasing, of course. It's been a trying time. Uh, people aren't used to being shut in and social distancing and keeping a distance away from people they love. It's a very hard thing to do. I miss all of you and Cindy does and being able to see you and hug you and shake your hands, it's um, it's quite trying. I think as I look at this event, it's certainly trying on all Americans. So, but I think fear is our biggest concern. Fear of the unknown. If you really want to be afraid and you want to be confused, turn on the TV and watch the report on the pandemic. It talks about economic crisis, the loss of jobs, the bills that people aren't able to pay, all the health concerns, the isolation, the panic, the depression, and it goes on and on. Why are we fearful? Well, I read some scripture that I wanted to pass on to you, and I think this may be it. It comes from Matthew chapter 8, beginning in verse 23 and reading through 27. You're very familiar with this. It's Jesus and his disciples and they've got the boat and they're crossing the Sea of Galilee. And beginning in verse 23 of chapter eight of Matthew, it says, now when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so the boat was covered with waves, but he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we come this morning, we just... Thank you for these words that remind us that you are in charge, that we who trust you have nothing to fear. We will be healed either way. We do have the promise of eternal life, and we, we believe your word, and we trust you, and we, we will continue to trust you during these very trying days. In Jesus' name, amen. In verse 26, Jesus says, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? You know, there's a difference between being cautious and being fearful. We as Christians have a responsibility to be cautious and not to uh, purposely endanger someone who is at risk from an infection like this uh, terrible virus that's taking quite a few lives. And I, the question this morning is, do you think God's asleep? His disciples became fearful on the boat and Jesus was in the boat with them. But they forgot he's always in control. He is all powerful. We have to trust him and believe his word and importantly stay in his word. We have more time than ever on our hands to pick up the Bible and read 
his encouraging words and his promises. In John chapter 17 and verse 17, it says, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. If you want to hear the truth, turn the TV off and pick up your Bible and read God's word. It is true. I can tell you this is not the first pandemic that has struck this world and it may not be the last. I believe God's word before there was a COVID-19 and I believe it today. I believe that his promises of rescuing us from anything that we ask him for in his name, he will do. I think that the power of this today is in us uniting as a church, whether we do it in our own living rooms, over uh, videos such as this, over text, through prayer. We have the Holy Spirit as the source of strength. I want to thank all of you for the positive feedback of our little first video attempt and all the texts and prayers. Cindy and I are available for any need. Anything that might come up during these very trying days, we're as close as the phone. Whether it's uh, an errand, you need some help uh, doing something, uh, picking up anything, medicine, anything like that, certainly let us know about prayer requests. Keep those on our prayer list in your prayers. Pray for them without ceasing. Uh, I was text uh, about Steve Wilson is in need of prayer. I think of Ronnie Spivey and people at risk who are waiting on transplants. Of the elderly like myself, the high risk patients like Cindy and her mother and, and some of the older ones in our communities. We need to be in constant touch and, and contact with each other and we need to be praying. We need to be praying today, we need to be praying tomorrow, and we need to keep praying. If you would, I'd like to close with a prayer this morning. Uh, if you would bow, please. Our Heavenly Father, we come this morning with thankful hearts that we have you to trust. We pray for those who do not believe in you. We pray that this would be an opportunity for people to turn their lives over, to know that we as human beings are dead to sin, that we live only through the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that comes in our lives when we accept Christ as our Savior. We pray if there's anyone today that's sees this video, who has not accepted Christ as their Savior, that they take this opportunity to give their life to Christ, to pledge to serve him as long as we live, that they would share the gospel with others and their family, their friends. And we know, Lord, that we too will get over this horrible pandemic, that it will pass, and we know that we're promised a better place, a better life, perfect health. We do pray for all those on our prayer list. Special prayers for those that uh, are undergoing treatments, who are high risk, who are suffering, and we pray your hedge of protection around our communities that you keep us safe. We love you. We trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you and we, we hope that uh, we get to see you in person soon. Have a, have a good day. Let us know if you need anything. In Jesus' name.